This is Endgame, and we're going to be talking about the future of Bitcoin. Uh, here is Kosnifsk's uh, Psych, uh, Namono, and McMoozy. Yeah, hey, McMoozy. There we go. Yeah, thank you. Great job, man. Thanks. It was a nice cultural touch. Yeah, we're going to start talking about cryptocurrency and the blockchain and where this is all going to go, and it's going to be crazy. But before we get into it, why don't we check in with both of you guys? Because I kind of want to hear just your general thoughts on the future. So let's, let's talk with McMuse. So Bitcoins aside, how, how do you feel about the future? I'm generally kind of neutral on a lot of things. I have a lot of mixed feelings on whether or not I'm optimistic or pessimistic. So it's kind of hard. I'm just riding the waves to the future. Like when you say neutral, is that because there are crazy extremes that are balancing each other out or you just don't believe anything crazy is possible and like nothing is going to happen? Think every, I think a lot of things are going to get very chaotic and slightly crazy and unpredictable and rapidly increasing oh. in development to the point where it's, it's, it's going to be a little much for people to take in. And I don't know how we're going to handle that. But I also see mm. a lot of really wonderful things happening that could help with that issue but I have no clue what it's going to look like or how we're going to approach it. That's been like kind of a concern of mine lately, because even now it's hard for me to keep up as things are going to get crazier and crazier. It's like, how am I going to keep up with all this? And I'm hoping that some kind of technology is going to solve that issue for me. Computer brain. Yeah, Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, imagine oh if you had like an AI friend who digested the world for you and then relayed it to you like, like you were a child, like condensed it and made it digestible. The problem is, is there's just too much. I think we have to like augment our brain in some way to be able to hold that much information. Hmm. I don't know. You know what we have to talk about is like specifically when transhumanism happens and there's like a split in species, like we're going to need to augment ourselves to keep up. But there's, you know, there's going to be people who don't want to, right? People who are going to be like, no, right. you're not putting a chip in my brain. That's going to be really strange when we start growing apart like that. That's actually one of my main concerns, honestly, is that divide. It's weird to start thinking about that because, like, it's not actually happening yet. Like, everyone has a cell phone. We're all sort of similar uh, as far everyone. as being, like, augmented. That's well, the point. Most like, people, some, right? like, is this going to be analogous to the people who chose not to do, not to have smartphones and things like that, you know? I think so, <sighs> but a little more extreme. I think we're seeing it now, like, the beginning stages of people who don't want to really accept new technologies, but not as extreme as it's going to be in, like, 20, 30 years. I'm gonna I don't make think a... I would get it. Wait, okay, I was just about to say, I'm going to assume that every single person in this room is going to do it because we're in virtual reality. <laughs> That's, so true. Like, what, That's true. Is it like physically implanting a computer into your body where you draw the line? Probably. I think, I think it would be. That's scary for some people. But what if it guarantees an extension of life? I mean, yeah, it's a whole, you know, if it monitors all your vitals and I don't know. I mean, I'm wearing an Apple Watch right now, so... I guess that's kind of yeah, it's not, you know. non-invasive. Yeah. True, true. Does the Apple Watch diagnose you at all or tell you if you're in a, it like, tells you a heart, your heart rate's abnormally high, which is actually sometimes it happens when I'm on Endgame and I'm like, yeah, my heart rate's <laughs> high because I'm in front of all these people talking right now. <laughs> but it, it doesn't know I'm exercising. It thinks I'm exercising or I should be exercising or I don't know. Yeah. So it, it would be really <laughs> cool if we could display it like on this panel behind us <laughs> and, and we just we could see no everyone's way. heart rate as they get like nervous. What about you, Cousin Effects? Where do you um, see things going? I'm somewhat optimistic. I do see like a bit of dystopia coming, uh, you know, as like corporations still become become like monopolies and oligopolies and, and stuff like that. Merging of multinational corporations, big, big, huge corporations. So I, I see like some some dystopian aspects happening in the future, but um, I, I'm still optimistic. Like that technology can still help humanity, like especially in like medicine and stuff like that, where we have like gene therapy coming up and stuff like that. Do you sense like that we're going to avoid the monopoly problem through technology, or like what, what's your sense of how we're going to get through that? Or are they going to end up being somehow not as 
you know, malicious as we might suspect or whatever. I mean, like the way you kind of look at like all these startups, a lot of them, they want to become acquired and the people who started get rich. Like when you have a startup and you want to, people are building them to be bought. To me, that just seems like trying to force everyone into monopoly or oligopolies. I have a slightly different view on that. More looking to the future and actually what we're talking about tonight is really talking about decentralizing things. I'm working for a startup right now that's specifically decentralizing marketplaces for that specific purpose, like things like Uber Mm. and Airbnb. And instead of it being owned by a company that started as a startup specifically to sell to a larger company or go public, uh, we're actually handing it to the public of the users. So um, if you're a rider and a driver at Uber, you would have full control over everything more so than the people who even started it, which would be democratic us. way. Uh, yeah, we're using uh, uh, cryptographic tokens, token models, like cryptocurrencies to hand that control to the public of, of users. Oh, that's exciting. Like, yeah. uh, man, that, that, may, that makes me pretty optimistic. So, uh, we'll probably come around to kind of hit a, on that thing again towards the end of the discussion, or at least once we get through some of the Bitcoin stuff. Um, Absolutely. Okay, we're going to a new location. Everybody get ready. What's improved? There's a trampoline now. Hey, guys. No, I don't hey, guys. Hey, guys. Else. Why won't the government embrace Bitcoin? They what? hate the idea of a proof of work. it's gonna be good like we're gonna make it we're gonna be a good currency we're gonna have a high value but people are calling us a scam they just don't know who we are yet they don't know how it works we'll be above 30 again well above 30 we'll be hundreds but what are we based on we're just ones and zeros i don't know what i am (laughs) what about love that's ones and zeros Friendship yeah, is ones Every- and zeros. Microsoft Office. It's all ones and zeros. Wait, who's leading this currency train? Be like, someone. who's leading this stuff? Yeah, where, where, where were we going? The train. Wait a second, guys, calm down. We're all driving the train, right? Bitcoin. 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 Oh, dude, I lied. So they, There's no trampoline. Hold our hands together. Uh, see, I was so looking forward to that. I was like actually really <laughs> excited of getting sick in VR on a trampoline. Okay, so on our journey into the future, like if we're going to get to that point where we're using the blockchain and there's all these smart contracts and we've somehow decentralized everything, what's step one? Step one is people trusting these new technologies, which is what the past 10 years really was, was well, Bitcoin proving itself as as a viable technology and not just some fad or or scam. And now that people are finally seeing that it is actually a genuine technology, they're they're placing trust into it. So, so I think what, that was really the first step. Like, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is actually two things. First, a problem was solved, and that was creating a decentralized database, which we've had centralized databases forever, and spreadsheets, which is essentially a database. And this is the first time an openly shareable and public database was invented. And the first use case, of course, with a database, you're going to start developing apps on top of that database. And the first killer app was a currency, which is Bitcoin, the currency, which there's always a confusion there because Bitcoin is two things. It's it's a an invention of a distributed database as well as a killer app, which is uh, a currency. Wait, is the database not the blockchain or how is that different? Correct. The blockchain is the database. The blockchain is kind of a buzzword, but that's all it is, is, is a distributed, openly accessible database. So, like, I guess mm. the problem was people trusted, what, the government more than this or like a corporation? They, they, they trusted more than it being completely open? Uh, the fact is, is not not everyone did trust it at first unless they dove in head first and understood a lot of the technical aspects of it, which uh, made it difficult. But the reason it can be trusted is because every 10 minutes, everyone who's, quote unquote, mining Bitcoin is just validating that that information that everyone got a copy of 
is correct. And, and it takes about 10 minutes to propagate to all the miners. And they all agree that, yes, this copy of this database that I received is correct. And then the other miners do the same thing. And eventually, after 10 minutes, everyone says, yes, this copy that everyone currently has is correct. And then they time stamp it in a block. How does it become a currency and what is being mined exactly? Mining is actually twofold. You're, you're validating that the information in that database, in that block that going into the database is correct. And you're also generating new Bitcoins. But you don't even have to generate Bitcoin. Other currencies do different things every 10 minutes That on top of that. Um, mining was just, like I said, that was for the first killer app. So that's the use case for, for a currency. Is the idea that it's sort of everyone's checking the ledger and then the re- there's a reward of the Bitcoin? Is that why there's two things happening? Right. That's that's actually just gives everyone incentive to even bother with mining at all. Uh, otherwise, I mean, mm-hmm. if it costs electricity, you're not going to waste electricity just to tell everyone, yeah, this database entry is correct. It's kind of a really expensive way to basically run a spreadsheet. But without having a currency tied to it, there would be no incentive. So you wouldn't have a distributed openly accessible database. So you kind of have to have a currency to to make it viable. Well, wait a second. I thought there's going to be a limited supply of Bitcoins. Like there's a, I don't know, I forget the number, but we're going to hit a certain million. number and that's 21 million and then that's it. So does that right. mean the incentive will go away at some point? No, um, because you do have to actually pay a uh, a fee to the network uh, and when you send bitcoin and in the future um instead of getting new bitcoins that are generated by the network itself you will just get transaction fees from people using the network that will be the incentive in the future which there's debate on whether or not that's even sustainable it's like it could all fall apart basically if people realize if, if we get to the maximum part of bitcoin and we mine them all and then people are like oh we thought this was going to be sustainable for miners to get a portion of what people the transaction fees and then all the places that have you know all the businesses that have been designed that are making money off of these exchanges say no sorry we're not sharing anything with you or what whatever happens all of a sudden if, if it becomes unviable everyone's the currency just can crash and basically become worthless if people decide that it's not worth anything anymore Right, exactly. which is why there's hundreds of other currencies trying to mm. take different approaches to that. Like uh, specifically, Ethereum actually has a completely different use case, which is smart contracts, which kind of eliminates that simplistic version of just a currency as an app, mm. uh, and it mo- moves on to uh, contractual agreements okay. being the use case and, and next app. So just to get, I'm just curious for the for you guys, if you feel like you understand Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, can you do a thumbs up? And if you're still confused about like what it is or, you know, how it works or anything, thumbs down. I'm just curious how where, where people are at. The dog gets it. Okay. One person's alarmed. All right. So it seems like people pretty much get the overall concept of a Bitcoin and kind of like why, you know, what what, what gives it value and how it works and everything. If you want to do research, there's like a ton of videos and like subreddits and all this that will help you understand it. I've tried looking into it, but it is really complicated and I still have difficulty like fully wrapping my mind around it. I, I sort of just you have can't to take a class. Point. <laughs> yeah. If you're a visual learner, I highly suggest going onto YouTube and watching some videos. It'll definitely help. You'll never really understand it until you use it. It's, it's really difficult to wrap your head around without that you, hands-on experience. Yeah, using it does help too. Yep. When you say use it, what does that mean? Because hmm. like, I can buy Bitcoin and Coinbase. I don't do anything. It's easy. Right. Well, actually using it, like sending it to people, transacting with it, getting a Visa debit card and spending it and understanding that it has that use case. I pay my rent in it. Playing with different apps that accept it. There's a lot of different games that use it. And seeing all those use cases really opens your mind to the value proposition of a programmable currency. Hmm. Wait, so cause up to this point, like, did you ever have a doubt? Like, because you sort of bought into this fairly early, right? So you trusted it. Yeah, I found out about it when it was less than a dollar. Um, but my I didn't. God. I didn't start. Oh my god! I didn't start, <laughs> I didn't start really get like I. I heard about it through um, Stephen Gibson, who's. Uh, he ran like a security uh, talk show and he talked about, explained Bitcoin. 
you can go to bitcoin.org and download a program for Windows, Mac, and Linux, which is open source, and install it on your computer and tell it to start generating bitcoins. That is literally start making money. So, now, so you are making money out of nothing. Well, just by okay. being a member. Of, I mean, how do, how does this this is, sounds like some sort of uh, bit torrent situation? I, I know. Where you, where you, it sounds wacky. And so I was like, hmm, this this seems pretty interesting. And then I I just kind of was like, okay, people use their CPU computer CPUs on the computer to do mining. And so I was like, that's that's kind of interesting, but it's not really worth anything. You know, it's only a couple cents. And then when I started hearing about it again, it was like six dollars, eight dollars. I'm like, whoa, wow! It, it's gone up from like when I first heard about a few cents to <laughs> to like six and eight dollars. And I'm, I was really, I started really getting interested. I'm like, that that's like a huge increase in value from, yeah. from when I first heard about it until then. So I was like, okay, well. This I heard about mining. Now you can use your video cards to do mining. So I was like, oh, this seems pretty cool. So I, I started reading about it on the forums on how to do it. And I joined a, a pool and started started mining. And I so I mined for, for a little while, for a few months. And then it got to be summertime. I'm like, okay, well, this, this, isn't, <laughs> this isn't happening. I, I live in a, like a tiny condo and on the top floor and like heat rises. So... I mean, it's just oh, like yeah, running, you're, basically you're, you're mining. punishing. You're punishing your GPU. You're you're running. Yeah, you have to manage board. that heat. You have to <laughs> yeah, monitor right, and right, manage right. that heat all the time. It's it's quite intense. I wanted to do that back in the day. Like I probably came in after you. Like it was like under sixty bucks maybe. And I was like, oh fuck, I got to start <laughs> mining. And I was never able to sort of figure it out. And I, I didn't. I ended up not doing it. But it's like. You could have just bought it, right? <laughs> like buying That's it would be happening. like so like, low it's effort. Summertime, it's it's way too hot to do mining. Uh, just uh, screw it. I'm just gonna buy some. So Bitcoin was back then, even when it was worth sixty. How much is it worth now? One I Bitcoin. Think it's now it's two thousand two hundred and fifty somewhere around there. <laughs> wow. All right. And so, but maybe most we'll of that is in like the last year. We should have bought. Like, yeah. Wasn't yeah. it like a yeah. thousand yeah. like a year ago? A year yeah, the market ago, cap increased like a hundred billion in in one year. Oh I remember <laughs> when I was I was in VR chat when when Trump became president, and I remember. Oh yeah. Um, I was I was in here with someone, and they ended up buying Bitcoin right then. It was like seven hundred and something dollars. Oh man. And so that that's how much it's grown in a year. I mean, it was just like what a few weeks ago that it's been what a year since he took office. It's quite wow. insane to to even think about, and and I've been doing I mean, this since two thousand eleven. I don't, think, I, I don't think like it doesn't matter to me. Like if we had a. Democrat or Republican in office, it doesn't matter. This this still would have gotten to this this level of pricing. Yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with like what party is in office. Whether we're going to do another fork. No. We must fork. Fork it all. <laughs> what happened last time we did that? What about the babies? Well, the Bitcoin it's babies. Well for everyone, but we, we definitely shouldn't do that. Bitcoin diamond. No. 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 Platinum is a very precious metal. We have How consensus. I think so, yes. We're forking. The consensus is forking. listen to me. Yeah, I, I don't see why we don't fork, guys. Come on. Uh, let's fork. No. You better step out. You need to what? You can go. go. Hey, 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 Get out of here! Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. No, I don't want to fork. Go. Goodbye. I'm going to miss you. I'll remain lost in some dumpster wallet. Goodbye. So, I mean... What interests you guys the most about the future related to cryptocurrencies? Is it blockchain in general or is it cryptocurrency? Is it specifically Bitcoin? For me, Bitcoin uh, just solved a key problem to move forward with distributed databases. Because now that you have a distributed database, it allows you to just start developing distributed ap applications in, in a non-centralized way, which we've never been able to do ever. That's something my company is really focused on at uh, 
I, I work for a company called District Zero X, and we're democratizing marketplaces and and allow creating a platform for people to deploy any type of marketplace. It could be a replacement for Uber, Airbnb, um, Task Rabbit, pretty much anything. Even though we're See, creating really it. it. Yeah, like well, I, I get lost during that step. Like, what yeah, does that mean that the yeah. app is being decentralized? You could actually see one of our apps in action right now, and and we have a decentralized job market which replaces Elance, which is one of the more popular freelancing websites right now. But instead of a centralized company charging fees, it's completely peer to peer and operates on uh, the Ethereum blockchain. And because Ethereum is a smart contract platform, that's kind of the the next step from currency is is smart contracts, which is no different than traditional contracts to run a business you you need contractual agreements to be able to run a business effectively and this allows you to do the same thing that businesses do but without lawyers and without boardrooms of people and you just have a contractual agreement that says if this happens this money goes here and on these dates this money goes here you can have vesting schedules for investments, you can have uh, time-released payments. You can do crowdfunding. You can do everything that a business can do, but in a completely transparent and predefined way, because money is now programmable. I mean, I kind of get it, but then like think about. Let's just give a freelance example of like, let's say I'm paying you to write something, right? And like, how does it know that what I've sent you isn't just like a blank document with gibberish, for example? A lot of it is based on um, there's escrow type systems that um, there's like escrow contracts that you would need to utilize. Escrow. An escrow contract would be you place money into a multi-signature address and that money can only be, re- be released if A, you sign that transaction and say, yes, they did the work. I signed it because I did the work. And then the third party who's kind of like an arbitration party that they could do it. Mm. But there's also other ways to do it that would be based purely on reputations, like on eBay someone has a really mm-hmm. good reputation so you go ahead and, and and you do business with that person because they just have a reputation for not screwing people over on ebay it's the same thing and but you can take it to a lot more of an advanced level because things are programmatical and you can just say um, a specific event needs to happen that can be publicly accessible through apis um, that could even be pulled to release funds and and it doesn't even need to be a human interaction Honestly, if you used, uh, they call them D apps, decentralized apps. There's a lot of different ones that we're actually developing. One was a freelance market. Uh, The second one that we created was called Name Bazaar, which actually makes human readable addresses instead of like a Bitcoin address is a long string of letters and numbers that is hard to read. Um, Ethereum allows you to create user readable names so you could send it to mcmuse.eth and mm. it makes that easier. And and this exchange we made allows people to buy and sell these names freely. And then the third one we're going to make is going to basically tokenize memes and make them rare digital collectibles, which isn't, isn't the new concept. Whoa, That's what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, so basically it turns a meme into a cryptocurrency and makes it tradable, and it's a little ridiculous. It's already a market. That's already happening. We're just kind of piggybacking off the idea and and advancing some of what's already being done. I can't understand what you're saying. Okay, I'm just going to give a dumb example, and then maybe I'm way off. So the rabbit hole is deep. I'm sorry. (laughs) So the meme thing, what does that mean? Like, Does that mean I can put a – I put an idea out there, and then it's kept track of, like, how – like, where it goes? Or what what does that mean? Right. Well, well, we're talking about databases, right? And okay, let's forget about memes. Let's talk okay. about music. Okay, music is a valuable thing. People like it, and there's a problem on the internet where music is being devalued by pirating and torrenting and illegal file sharing. And a lot of musicians are upset about losing royalties and all that. So let's apply this concept to music instead. And you're tokenizing a song. And you can make a limited amount of them and make them a limited edition token that is tied to a song. And that song could be traded like a cryptocurrency. You could limit them in in numbers. And as long as they're traded on this database, just like any other cryptocurrency is right now, 
that song becomes a cryptocurrency, it becomes kind of artificially scarce and people can buy and sell them on markets like cryptocurrencies. The tying the song or content to a cryptographic token is the hard part, but it's actually what we're trying to solve as long as as well as a lot of other people in the industry. And people have been very successful at creating new types of platforms that allow you to have a financial benefit to doing this. Because a lot of people say, well, if I can get music for free, why would I go pay for it on some weird cryptocurrency exchange? And it's because it benefits the musician, it benefits the listener, and it basically takes the model of something like Spotify and takes it a step further to where it's better than free. You're actually getting paid to listen to music. The last part, I didn't get how the person gets paid, but I, I like the idea of taking iTunes out of the equation or whatever, right? or Spotify, right. right? So like the artist yeah. no longer needs a third party to distribute. There's a direct at all. connection. Yep. So now how does the listener make money out of that equation? That part I didn't get. Well, okay, I'm a musician. If people want to come to my show at the Pug, uh, imagine if there's a way to register who's avatar was there let's say you get participation points and after a certain point of participation points you're kicked a little bit of uh, a free song from brady on a platform like i'm talking about that song happens to be a crypto token that is actually valuable on an exchange and you get them as a reward for coming to mcmuse's shows and this type of idea is something that's about to happen in the next year with content to where you're not having to buy them, you're really earning them, and they do have a market value because that is a, a specific thing that my company's working on called curation markets, and that's a whole nother rabbit hole. So like every single time someone sold or like traded a song, would the artist get like a certain percentage of whatever was being traded? Well, because we're dealing with smart contracts, you could predefine that and say, yes, every time someone buys or sells something on uh, the McMuse website, which would be just like an exchange that people are able to a, earn my, my songs, which are also cryptocurrencies, uh, they could also sell them back to the website. And when they interact like this, you could predefine and tell everyone, yes, every time that you're interacting with my songs, the artist does get 10% of every interaction that you do and when you buy and sell these tokens. And that's how a smart contract works. You could just predefine these percentages. And you can even say, hey, 10% of everything that you do with McMuse tokens actually goes to charity as well as partially to me, as well as partially to a pool for the community of song creators to help crowdfund for new artists. And because it's all predefined in a smart contract, everyone knows that that is going to happen when they interact with these decentralized apps. What prevents people from pirating this music currency or meme currency? Well, because it's it's like Bitcoin, you can't really pirate Bitcoin. It's a crypto token that you can't just copy and paste it's uh yeah that's a ledger they're... part we need to talk about that so like let's pretend it's a piece of music and you sell it to psych right so like how is he playing that piece of music on his computer is he using a different application well no you would have to actually have a d app application specific to these markets that i'm talking about it has to be attached to the ethereum network or whatever like you're not just yeah, taking but they it can out. play it freely. I mean, the the thing is, is music is free right now, so nothing's stopping from someone from listening to music for free. Nothing's stopping anyone from pirating it. This just creates a new economic layer for music that allows artists to monetize their music in ways that have never existed before. So nothing's stopping anyone from listening to music for free now, and nothing will stop them from listening to music for free in the future. But if you can make money by listening to music on these new platforms and benefit the artist and benefit charity and possibly other artists who are uprising, that kind of benefits everyone in a very communal kind of way and creates a community around the music rather than people just pirating it because they can't afford it or because they just want to. And it creates a whole new market that has never existed before. Oh, that seems a lot healthier. Yeah, yeah. And it is. Yeah. It creates communal currencies as well as communal markets. And that's really what my company is focusing on specifically is uh, creating a platform for communal marketplaces to blossom and grow. And we're even like taking ourselves out of the equation and handing that ownership to the public. That's a whole nother conversation, though. I was also wondering, like, what prevents 
things like monopolies from forming in these. Like, say a musician were to charge way more than what's necessary for their music. And people if, won't buy it. Mu- <laughs> yeah, exactly. If, if someone doesn't mm. like the way a musician's operating, A, they're doing it very publicly. So everyone is going to see what they're doing. And if you don't like it, you're going to be like, wow, that musician's a total jerk. Because this musician over here is donating 10% to charity, 10% to other artists, 10% to his fans, taking 10% for himself, and then putting uh, the rest of it into mm. a pool to help benefit the overall ecosystem and marketplace. Well, if a musician's value, doing that, uh, is I that mean, coming I, out of the musician's pocket is what you're asking? I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess with typical currency, there's something that prints the currency. So, I mean, essentially right. through behaviors, people are eliciting a printing press to pr- or whatever to print the currency you, to dole you out. Turn, you, you turn actions and, and um, engagement of, of an artist's yeah. fans, you turn that engagement of your fans into basically mining the cryptocurrency. So you're, so you're basically kind of take it's kind of sounds like grinding in an MMO to me. Like you're getting experience yeah. points essentially, and then you're people are agreeing that experience points are worth something. So then therefore right. the experience that you're gaining through a specific so basically this is kind of leaning towards a gamified society where we're just we're getting, you know, rewards that are kind of determined by some entity to be worth right. something that, you know, oh yeah. I mean, is that is that are we going towards a world where like loading Facebook and reading through the newsfeed is going to help us earn some kind of cryptocurrency so that they can like mine our data and advertise to us and things like that. Absolutely. 100%. Wow. Oh man. I was really optimistic. Every action action you make in, in, uh, because there's already platforms that do that. There's social media platforms that operate on, uh, there's one called Steam, and if you are upvoting and um, things on Steam, the person who posted that will actually earn income for you upvoting, and the upvotes actually are costing uh, a cryptocurrency, as well as posting and different market mechanics within that social media platform that allow basically the sharing and curation of content to make money, which is essentially that's what a curation market is, is adding a monetization layer to Facebook upvotes. Ain't you ever heard of Silk Road? Come on, anything you want. Just ship it to your neighbor's house when they're out of town. What do you want? Come on, come on, don't be shy. Uh, can I get some heroin? Go inside. We got you covered. Yeah. Don't worry. Distributed uh, currency. Come on. What do you want? I, I just, I don't like this government. What if we ran it? You know, I want to be the next Bitcoin president. I like where you're going. Get inside. We got All you. All right. Next. What do you want? Just love. Just come inside. Don't worry. We got you. We got love all for sale. Yeah. All ones and zeros. What do you I'm, want? Uh, I'm looking to take down the Federal Reserve. You with me? We're all with you. Come on in. This is the distributed system, see? You put one block here and another block here. And there, it's the blockchain. And then everybody puts their blocks down. Just put the block right here. And it's on the blockchain. We got a blockchain! Oh my god, these aren't verified yet! These have to be verified! Somebody verify these! These blocks need to be verified! Oh! Uh, Slick Rick? Yeah, I just thought I'd throw in my two cents. Uh, uh, one of the things that I've heard people have been working on is uh, like a democracy app. So like voting. And they're yeah. going to be decentralizing essentially forms of governance. Uh, earlier, Cause and Effects was talking about like the encroaching uh, monopoly and uh, how corporations are gaining control. Uh, This Ethereum and sort of a decentralized democracy gives me a lot of optimism about the the future because I think that's going to be one of the greatest tools to counteract this encroaching uh, oligarchy. I'm glad you brought that up, Slick Rick. That is is actually the rabbit hole I was trying not to go down because... (laughs) really opens up another can of worms about governance over decentralized apps and marketplaces. But you're absolutely right. That is something um, 
a number of different projects are working on, one of which is partnered with my company, and they're, they're building a governance platform that replaces a lot of the functions within businesses or even uh, traditional uh, nation state governance that allows you to manage an economy, which essentially that's what governance is, is the management of an economy. And uh, if you can do things on a micro scale and and get concepts like what some people call liquid democracy, which is more of a direct democracy type approach using cryptocurrencies, it gives you a lot more flexibility, especially when things are so transparent and and open and there's no backroom deals or shadowy under the table business going on. It's all on publicly viewable public ledgers and yeah, exactly. Like we could have transparency in governance and hold our leaders accountable. Yep, which, which is something that, seems that is kind of what's, impossible. What's missing. I remember well, like having this argument with sure. people years ago where I was like, well, don't we already have the technology that we can have like a better, you know, voting system or we, 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 something like and everything I heard from my friends was no, because everything's hackable. People will take advantage of the system. So like, is, is this the game changer that something like a blockchain or whatever creates a transparent system that is more reliable that we can actually have trust in? In terms of governance, I would say governance, smart contracts specifically, need to prove themselves the same way that Bitcoin and blockchain has. And that's that's something that has only begun evolving and emerging in the, in the tech industry in the past couple of years. And it is not even close to mature yet. But I would say within 10 years, we'll probably know more so the answer to whether or not that's going to affect traditional nation states. And considering the fact that blockchain technology is currently being implemented in some of the largest governments and corporations, literally this year, was there was a big push from like JP Morgan's developing smart contract platforms on, on Ethereum. And uh, the uh, the International Monetary Fund is talking about putting cryptocurrencies into the SDR currency basket to help stabilize their SDR currency, as well as a number of other banks. And governments are starting to say that they're going to have to start creating their own versions of cryptocurrencies to compete um, because they are a, a threat to the economy if they don't, which might be true. Deflationary economics doesn't really mesh well with inflationary economic theories um, they're in stark contrast so because this is starting to land on the political realm in a very real way that could very well happen with governance once it matures as well because bitcoin's almost 10 years old now it takes about 10 years for a new technology to come to market and prove itself and that happened with blockchain and digital programmable currencies Smart contracts will likely do the same thing as well as governance platforms, but that is definitely yet to be seen. Do you buy into all this cause? I'm trusting him because I'm not understanding everything, but it sounds phenomenal. And I, I, but I have to put faith that he's telling me the truth. Yeah, I mean, the amount of money that's being poured into it now, uh, I think people are, are starting to, to trust it. As far as like all the smart contracts and stuff are concerned, I think that it's going to take, like you said, like 10 years because a generation has to, to come in and understand the technology and be able to build upon it. I don't think there's like a really large number of people out there that can build stuff right now because there's there's a lot of complexities. They have to understand how, how everything works. So I think right. we'll get there, but it's going to take time because everyone's going to have to learn how how it works. In terms of marketplaces, I think that's really important. At my company, what we're doing, you could actually equate what we're doing to creating the WordPress of dApps to where these market markets that we're creating now are like WordPress templates. And we also have like an app market that we're going to be developing that allows you to use them very much like WordPress plugins to extend functionality. But they're completely decentralized apps that aren't even owned by us. We basically create them, throw them to the wolves and let everyone have it and walk away from our baby. <laughs> I think it's like a big paradigm shift for like your average consumer, you know, like your your baby boomer. They're they're so used to like regular corporations. Someone makes something and then it goes through a few different stores and you can buy it. Going from right. from that to to like decentralized 
um, markets, that's like a big sh paradigm shift. Yeah. And it's going to take, uh, take a while for people to catch on, I think. Spaghetti Man, what are you... Are those meatballs? Are your eyes meatballs? Is that is that correct? No, it's oh, no my top, eyes are dude. here. Oh, wow. All right. Well, They're anyway, blinking. the question is, uh, devolving back to Bitcoin in general, how it's a uh, cryptocurrency based on, you know, generating a hash that has to be validated with the correct private key, you know, and it's without right. a public key. What do you think is going to happen when quantum computers get to such a high level that mm. people could figure out what that private key is and generate a bunch of fraudulent, valid public keys and basically completely throw off an entire market like say some nefarious third party who you know hates one artist's song wants to screw them over horribly here's the thing you're you're not going to be able to prevent it because there's an unfortunate issue with the fact that bitcoin specifically uses a very specific hashing function that is called sha256 and that is a, a very specific one that could run into that problem that we could have quantum computers that just crush that entire entire system but that doesn't mean you couldn't create a new one based on a new hashing function uh and that new protocol would have a higher level of encryption uh, and it, you mm. could even have a quantum version of this same system which coincidentally enough Russia just announced that they want to create a, a quote unquote Russian Bitcoin and they wanted to make it a quantum resistant Bitcoin. What makes it quantum resistant? You take that mining function and instead of using older hashing functions like SHA-256, you're using new hashing functions that are specific to quantum computers, which are highly uh more advanced than what SHA-256 ever will be. SHA-256 is honestly um, kind of a low bar for, for hash functions. There's already many that are they're more advanced than SHA-256. Mm. And when quantum computers come into play and, and are more general purpose, which they will be eventually, probably within the next 10 years as well, you'll start seeing uh, hashing functions that are quantum computer specific. And when you have large governments already talking about this, uh, they're already being very forward thinking about creating hashing functions and digital cu currencies based on those quantum hashing functions. So uh, when we get there in 10 years, we're not going to be talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum. It'll be something new. Yeah, well, here's the other thing. Um, some blockchain projects are allowing the flexibility of making their hashing function upgradable. Instead of being locked into two, a SHA-256, they could actually upgrade that hashing function as time goes on to where if there was a problem, you would just upgrade the network. <sighs> um, I mean, we're, we're getting towards the end. So I want to sort of get into speculation or how you guys feel yeah. about the future. And when we talk about the future, we're usually talking about 100 years from now. But it, we're talking like, I mean, look, in 10 years, it's not as if this will have all come true and this will have taken over all government and the marketplace. But we're going to be on the path theoretically at that point, right? And like, it'll be ahead of us. Um, yeah. So like someone already asked you, cause in the very beginning, you were talking about the monopoly problem. Like, does this give you even more faith that we'll be able to overcome that? It depends on the markets. Yeah. For example, the way that we get internet and cable and you know, like television now, it's all through like one or two companies at the last mile. Yeah. That, that type of technology isn't going to change overnight. I mean, I don't think that monopolies and oligopolies are going to be going away altogether, but in certain markets, it will. I mean, this is a strange question. Is it going to get bigger and bigger from here? Or do you think we're seeing the high point and things will start to come down the other way and become more decentralized? I think it'll stay the same. Like, they'll, they'll become more monopolies, but they'll also become more smaller decentralized stuff as well. It seems to me like those things contradict each other, right? Like the rise of a decentralized you know, marketplace, government, uh, like everything. Doesn't that yeah, mean the it other? It depends on the market, though. But look at J.P. Mm. Morgan too. If they're getting into it, like they're—I yeah. mean, I guess they won't control the cryptocurrency. You know, I mean, maybe that's a better thing if J.P. Morgan is using cryptocurrency instead of dollars. But they're you know, like physical things like that. You think about like food and electricity. Most of the world's food is controlled by like a few companies, or they're right. like 
few mega companies that own lots of different brands. So it kind of gives the illusion that there's a lot of different companies out in the market, but there really isn't. It's but, kind of an artificial breaking up of monopolies too, when they create multiple companies that are basically one large company. And that's an awareness issue. A lot of a lot of the public, if they were aware of that, they would probably demand something different. And uh, there's even government in- intervention throughout history with the, the telecom industry where they forced the breakup of monopolies. Um, I don't know if I fully agree with governments forcing that or, or if natural free markets should do it. I don't, I don't think anyone knows the answer to that, but it is mm. interesting that, that we're seeing a granular experiment to see if maybe we can see a path forward to fixing those problems. Is there backlash from any countries? Didn't someone ban Bitcoin or something? Well, China it's been is, in Thailand. <laughs> China just uh, shut down a lot of the exchanges. But I think what China is probably most likely going to do is uh, you can't really get rid of cryptocurrencies. They're probably going to move to some nationalist type system to where they're in control of the exchanges within their country so they can monitor things. They've done that with other industries. So I have no doubt that they're going to probably do that with cryptocurrency, too. It would be in their best interest. So some countries are already talking about the fact that they will only allow nationalist uh, cryptocurrency exchanges in their country. I really liked this conversation because I feel like, at least for me, I did not conceptualize this possible route of the future. It's kind of inaccessible to the layman. I mean, like, you know, the average person is not going to really understand these concepts. And so it's interesting that, you know, to them, if there's an app that they're opening that's doing these kinds of things, they might understand, oh, I'm getting for music, for example, they might understand, oh, I'm getting some kind of value out of this, but they're not really going to know the mechanisms behind it. Not that they know how Spotify works. Anyway, like, I mean, that's that's where we yeah. are. I think I mean, unless you understand the underlying infrastructure, people are kind of using technologies without really understanding how they're working. So maybe that's that's uh, businesses really that's their job is to understand the underlying frameworks and then to hand really nice looking UIs to the public so they can just experience the benefits of those technologies, which the I think music is the reason I really am interested in, in integrating these technologies with music is because I feel like that is the entertainment, even VR, music, books, movies, uh, everything is a really nice medium to introduce these benefits to people. Yeah, It's it's a self-empowering technology at, at its core. And the more people who have access to it, the more people who are empowered. And if you can use a vehicle like entertainment to bring it to the masses, I feel like that's probably the least friction to, to actually accomplish that. I'm uh, just excited for it to get integrated into VR chat so we can start yes. ex- exchanging. If that happens, I will buy so many, I will buy so many VR chat, like Bitcoins or whatever. Well, well, well think about it. You can, you can use it now. You can, you can use any, any crypto to- token True. and any wallet. And you can say, Hey, can you do me a favor? I have this problem with my avatar. He's stuck in T-pose. Can you fix it for me? And, uh, and I'll tip you a little bit of Bitcoin or Ethereum or chicken yeah. coin or whatever that's not good yeah. enough because that means you have to leave the leave the app i i want to like i tell you hey do a little dance for me and then you do the dance and then i reach into my pocket <laughs> out comes a coin <laughs> a tip and i hand it to you <laughs> and then the yeah, transaction is done well i think the hard part there is getting in in world um security of public and private keys which that's a problem outside of vr that is being solved by a lot of very creative people and i feel like when the public private key management issue is solved which is kind of an identity issue that's like how do you how do you secure your private data and in a way that is decentralized then you can transfer something like that in in something that really isn't fair a very secure environment without it being compromising all your money <laughs> i want to start charging people a, a fraction of a whatever to get to come to end game like you enter the, the room and you, you pay, you pay an endgame coin, and it goes into no, a pool. Be earning it, and then, yeah, and then it goes to the person. Pay them. Yeah. Uh, I, sure, we pay them, and then whoever asks the best question, we all vote, and we credit them, and they get a pool of money or something. Somehow to incentivize <laughs> like a better discussion with currency. I'll bet you could do it. You you could start that now um, with like just creating like the, the curation market idea is, is an interesting conversation that I feel like we should come back to later. 
It's a very deep conversation, but it applies to content like avatars and and digital guitars and and avatar design and and room design and even talk shows. This is just a new type of social media, really. And if we're talking about monetizing every aspect of social media, that's down to you and I having a conversation, interacting, the people in here, uh, people stepping up and asking questions. You could monetize every bit of that and not for you or me, but for the people engaging and they could actually make a living by interacting and engaging in this room. That's coming within a couple of years. Does this frighten you? Because like this all sounded good, but then you brought up gamification and like usually (laughs) gamification scares me because it's coming down on us from on high where it's like some corporation using it to take advantage and extract value from us. Right. Like, like uh, the gambling instinct or, or whatever. But if it's open and it's transparent, like, are we going to fuck ourselves? Like, are, are we going to gamify? Our, is this somehow going to lead us into yeah, well, some I'm dark place? Yeah, well, I'm thinking that this can converge with the idea of universal basic income, right? So, like, we're yep. thinking, oh, Absolutely. everyone needs universal basic income and everything. And, like, we talked about at the end of that episode, we talked about the possibility of, like, everyone, maybe UBI could be cryptocurrency. But now I'm wondering, like, maybe it's going to be... Uh, you know, you have to do these, this specific set of behaviors, you'll get a little piece of cryptocurrency for each one, and that's going to be your UBI. And it's just going to be, we're basically going to become behavioral slaves to the economy and kind of like how we already are. But that's a dark well, projection, I guess, into the future. But Think about it, though. You have two options. You can gamify society or have a dictatorship. Because there's nothing really in between. You have, okay, in in terms of our society right now, you get this piece of paper from this office so you can drive this machine, so you can get to this office, so you can get this piece of paper. It's it's like a game. It's like a role-playing game. That's how society is structured. Or you have a dictatorship. Go do this or else. And that's that's it. Is that our nugget? I mean, is that is that our? <laughs> our I, I wish uh, there, I wish there was something in between. That's a little that's a little dystopian, and I'm sorry, but hey, that's the way I look at hey, things. I'm always I'm always also like at the same level of negativity. So you know, I, I I'm a realist. I, what can I know? Okay. Well, well, I, I I am an optimist, but that is reality, and no one's challenged that view to me ever. Yeah. And I would love to see if there was something in between there, because I just don't see it. Hold the line. Survival. Oh, you're a dirty coin. Hold your Bitcoin. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold, 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 hold your Bitcoin. Hold it. Hold, hold, hold it, everyone. Hold. Oh, no. I don't even know who I'm shooting anymore. Never letting go. I hold the line. Never going to let go. What should we leave people with? Should should everyone go out and buy a Bitcoin even at this price? Or what no. should people do if they have never? What should they do? If you, Step one. If you How do we get rich? Never, no, yeah. No, if you have never gotten involved with this, the biggest dis- distinction between the projects that you're going to go learn about, and there's hundreds and hundreds of them. So if you're looking at them, it's really important to see which ones will allow you to earn and which ones you can only buy, because that says a lot about the founders of that project and their intentions. And if you can earn it, why buy it? I guess what I'll leave people with is if if you want to invest, don't invest anything that you wouldn't normally just consider throwaway money. Yeah, you have to be prepared to lose it. Nothing's guaranteed. Yeah, nothing's guaranteed. If you don't invest anything that, that you don't mind going to zero dollars. In fact, if if I told everyone how much money I have lost getting involved with this, I have paid my tuition and you should look at anything you do lose and, and intend on investing as an investment in your own education with the expectation of losing it as an investment in that education. And if you happen to make something, all the power to you, I guess that education worked out. All right, All hooray, right. we did it. Yay. Uh, oh, we got to we gotta do a, a big group Yay. picture. The pillar is the blockchain. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's from the oh, Gears shit. of Thrones or the Wars Gears. All right, I'll the touch gear, you. Gear I'll touch you What's the name of that game? Gears of War. Gears of War. Gears of Thrones. All right, All right goodbye, Internet. I want to see. Change the night. Change the night.
There's only one private key. Join us. Why aren't you a Bitcoin, sir? What? Do you have a moment for me to tell you about our Lord and Savior, the blockchain? No. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not based on the two binary system. Wait up, wait up.